Hi, this is a quick video on how you can run your own uh, API server um, on, on a local machine. So on Vedestro, you know, it's open source. So whenever you're using a part of the service, you're running a backend server. There's a server at the back that the commands are sent to that gets, that gets for instance, the data that's going to pop in here. Yeah, so this came in for an API server. And when you do a calculation, it, it, the calculation is done on the on the server. So what if you want to run the API server locally? And you can do that because the code is open source. You can run your own uh, version of the server backend. So for instance, if I use the match predictor, it's somewhere here, right there. So I'll be calling the API, online API, this method. So you can run, so this is a, this is a local server. And I'm running this right now. So uh, even though I'm on the main website, right? So of course, there's a feature at the back end right here that allows you to go in and, and change the settings and you can run your API server. So that's one thing. The second thing here is that, yeah, today I'm going to show how you can do it, how you can actually run the API server, um, yeah, on your own, your, on your machine. All right, so it's quite simple, really. Uh, you shut down. So first thing you got to do is just go head over to the source code. Now, like I said, it's open source, head over to the source code and clone the whole thing. You need the whole thing because you have something called library here. I know first of all, you're looking at the API and if you just clone the API, you think it'll work, but actually it won't because um, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of caching going on and we want to make sure there's the consistency in the, in the references being made. So um, you, you have to take the whole thing. So maybe in the future we'll improve on it, but for now it's, it's, it's one big thing. So clone it, there's many ways you can clone it. You know, it's pretty standard way of cloning it. All you need, basically need is you need a copy of, of this uh, repo on your local machine, all right? So, okay, so here I have uh, the exact copy of the repo uh, that's online. Uh, on my local machine. So once you've got that, navigate to the folder, right? You know, you navigate this folder, make sure you got a clone zip, you unzip it and you get a folder like this. Um, navigate to the folder and look for this file called called genso.astrology.sln. Okay, so maybe the naming is part of the old system and we got to change that. But uh, yeah, this you're basically looking for a solution file and we change this in the future. You basically go to the main repo and you look for the solution file. Now, when you open the solution file, you got to make sure you open in Visual Studio, uh, the full version, not Visual Studio code. There's two versions. Keep that in mind. You know, uh, when you click on the little help button and you look at the version, you got to have something that looks like this. There we go. So uh, make sure you're running the latest of the latest versions. You know, you like to stay updated. You know, don't use all old crappy versions. You know, the, the new ones are always better. So stick to the latest ones. Another important thing that you got to make sure when you're installing um, Visual Studio is that you got to make sure the module is selected right. So when you're installing Visual Studio, you have an option whereby you get to pick which modules you want and you got to make sure you got to pick the right ones. So uh, Azure Development, ASP.NET and uh, Desktop Development, you got to make sure these three modules are selected. You can select the rest if you want as per your need, but the minimum requirements are one, two and three. Yeah, and that's about it. So once you got that, then you select it and you install and you should have install version. And then from there, uh, you know, you just make sure you have this version number incorrect as well. It's always the latest, latest possible version that you can get uh, for Visual Studio. And then you'll know you uh, on the Visual Studio side, you're pretty much settled. Yeah. So once you have the latest Visual Studio, so uh, go and run and um, of course you open. Yeah, like I said, you're here. So when you open the solution folder, now uh, it's important to get the right version. Once you got that, you'll be end up you'll be ended in here. So yeah, make sure you know you collapse everything. Then you have a clear view of what's going on. And here, there we go. We have the API and all the other projects. Leave them be. Now, an important um, thing you have to remember before you run the server is that you have to update the local um, settings. So in once you've uh, found the folder in API under under API folder, you'll find you just go through the list of files here and uh, look for something that calls uh, that is called local settings or json sample the json okay so this file is not synced to the git obviously because this is a file that contains your connection strings or api keys all right so uh, the app will build but um, some functions may not work because it requires uh, apis for instance google api 
to um, work, for instance, like to check the map settings and things like that. So uh, locations, I mean. So um, you obviously you can go get your own or local. Uh, you can go get your own uh, Google API key, and uh, where do you put them in? So you put them in here. So you find you open this file. So you can see this file is where the real keys are, and, and it's not synced. Make sure you don't sync your own keys as well. Uh, this, but don't worry, these files are automatically uh, checked for in your git uh, ignore list and they will be ignored. So that's why we have this little start sample JSON so that you can make a clone of this, a copy of this and then fill in your own uh, keys and then you rename the file to this so on your side obviously. So uh, let's just take a look what that file will look like. And there it is. So once you're in here, you have this. Um, so this too can be left alone. It's just uh, the work run times. If you know what it means, then go ahead and change them. Uh, next is your web storage, Bing search, and all these little settings. So not so again, it's quite obvious not all these functions will be needed by your system that you're planning to do. And for most functions, the API will just basically work without. It should work. I mean, without. If you run into problems, trace them back and see. Um, which keys are, are required maybe if there any and it might not even be a problem here but uh, you might need this file so all you gotta do is local settings you now just take out the word sample make sure you take out the word sample and you'll be left with the original file and it won't be synced don't worry about that and uh you know once you got that working and yeah you can hit you can hit play and continue you know give it a give it a few seconds you know it's gonna load up there you, there you go so this means that you have the local, uh, you have the full API server now uh, running locally on your machine, the Vedastro server, like, you know, uh, all the calculations that you can do, look at that, find birth time, house strength, based on, based on house strength of a person. So you're basically finding, so you can run this amazing calculation straight off your local machine, you know, you don't, and you can do your, so there's also another question on why you'd want to do this, right? So just before I go to that part, let's just take a look at this. So this is the your this is the uh, address the of your server for this call. Remember that, and remember this is the get request. So if you're going to be using Postman, you know uh, we are in Postman right now. Make sure that you're running you're running the right uh, yeah using it's get server the thing that matches here. Now uh, coming back to the point on why would anybody wouldn't want to do this right? So it's quite simple really. Um, for instance, let's say you come in here and this is you know, about the S number calculations is one of the main the main calculators in the library that's contributing to the API. Let's say you got some calculations and you got and you want to change them. Like for instance this one. This one comes up in the open API and you want to run your own open API and for instance you want to change this 15 to a 17. Now it's the this, the beautiful thing is that you can do this, you can hit you can hit rebuild and there you go. And you know you have your local API server and if you connect uh, to your, uh, you know, online to the local host, you can use the feature account into an account for you have this feature where uh, you can do this debug feature and you can connect in to your local server. So there we go. That's that's that that's uh, you know it's really simple to run 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 your uh, API server and uh, yeah you can have a lot of fun with it. You can do a lot of customizations and it opens up a lot of potential. I better change that back to 15. I don't know what the heck that is, right? Okay, so uh, yeah, close that up. You know, if you think the changes you make is is relevant, you know, please make make a make a pull request, and you know, if it's if we can make it public as well, and once it's public, you know, we can get it up on online in less than 24 hours. So yeah, if you got any questions, leave them in the comments, and uh, thanks for watching.